Welcome to the Stan Watson Show. I'm your host, Stan Watson. Thank you again for tuning in to our live call-in show. You can call me tonight at 770-559-2999. That is our call-in number. We're located uh, off of Malone Drive, which is right off of Peachtree Industrial, and Comcast Studio 25. So thank you for tuning in. I have a very, very exciting guest. As a matter of fact, she and I go to church together. She has a great organization, Live Healthy and Thrive Youth Foundation, which is a... Um, Organization, award-winning 501c3 nonprofit organization dedicated to fostering and promoting kids' health. The mission is to educate, to activate, motivate, and empower youth in the areas of academic achievement, health, fitness, nutrition, and total wellness. Welcome, my first guest, Ms. Lori Manns. Pleased to meet you tonight. Pleased to be here, Stan. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you for being here. Tell me a little bit about your organization. I know you have been doing this for a number of years now. How did you start the organization? Basically started the organization just as a way to give back to the community and educate children about essential habits of healthy lifestyle mm -hmm. so that they avoid obesity, diabetes, and Excellent. hypertension. And you say you empower youth in the, in the areas of academic achievement, health, fitness, nutrition, and total wellness. Those are great uh, attributes for any small child or a young adult to have. Right. Talk a little bit about the areas of academic achievement, what we're doing there. Well, we established the Pinnacle Youth Scholarship Fund. Oh, excellent, okay. And that fund is where we give um, high school students the Pinnacle Award mm -hmm. and we give them book scholarships, $500 book excellent. scholarships. Now, is this for college this or for high for school? This is for college, Okay, yes. for college, so okay. So we give high school students mm -hmm. the $500 scholarships. $500, okay. Yes. And what about an area of health? I know we talked about obesity. Uh, we know that oftentimes we go to our schools and our kids are still sitting in the classroom because they're taking physical education out of the classroom. Right. What are you doing to foster approach to make sure that we have healthy initiatives in schools? Well, we started the Gardens Are For Kids program, okay. and it is a interactive program for f schools in Fulton and DeKalb County to teach kids about healthy foods, how to plant mm -hmm. and grow foods. And Their own foods, huh? Exactly, where okay. food comes from. And so this year we actually donated a garden to Benteen Elementary School, mm -hmm. and the Benteen is in Atlanta. It is in, in Atlanta, Atlanta right, okay. and it's right off, of, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right off of um, Moreland. And mm -hmm. uh, it's in Atlanta Public School, sure. and we service, of course, Fulton and DeKalb counties. Um, but basically, we're just teaching children that food is essential mm -hmm. to their health, and, and it starts in the kitchen, basically. Right, in terms, the at home first. Right, and at home. Mm -hmm. So. We can't expect students to get everything from school. We have to start teaching them at home how to grow right. their own food, right. how to eat healthy foods, and Excellent. exercise and get nutrition. Now, how important is it to uh, start at home? We talk about nutrition and healthy foods. Oftentimes, and especially in the southern part of the country where we are, yes. uh, we, we serve traditional soul food dinners. Uh, in our schools, we have sugary drinks. In some of our schools, right. uh, what's the message that we should be uh, portraying to our young people as it relates to soul food and, and uh, sugar in schools and those kind of things? I think the best thing to do is everything in balance. That's mm -hmm. the message that we should be trying balance to get to approach. our yeah, a mm -hmm. balanced approach to health okay. and wellness because you don't want kids to think that they can't have anything <laughs> sweet and that right, they can't no, do any no. ice cream days right, or right, anything right. like that. That's those are the reward days. Right. Those are the reward uh -huh. days. And so we have to balance out the healthy foods with mm -hmm. the snack foods. But mm -hmm. it's important to teach them that if you have healthy lifestyle habits as a child, mm -hmm. you're more likely to grow up with those healthy habits as an adult and avoid those preventable illnesses. That, I think that's excellent. Now, who are some of your, your stakeholders uh, that you deal with every day uh, to make your programs work? Is it the faith-based community? Is it schools? Is it uh, health fairs? Who, who are your stakeholders? Well, we partner with the Boys and Girls Club Excellent. on mm -hmm. some of our um, workshops for mm -hmm. healthy kids. Okay. And uh, we also work with um, community churches okay. and uh, community centers okay. in both Fulton and DeKalb County. And That's of course, awesome approach, yes. Yeah, of course, we um, go into the schools as mm -hmm. well. Now, have you met any resistance from the schools. I mean, I know that DeKalb County's uh, motto is the school and the community can never be apart. Right. So have you met any resistance in Atlanta public schools or in DeKalb County? Well, there's been some resistance. <laughs> just with, a little bit, huh? Well, just, just a little bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> because it starts with um, administration and mm -hmm. then it filters down from there. Mm -hmm. And um, if they don't already have a healthy initiative in the school, right. then getting somebody mm -hmm. to kind of spearhead it, sure. uh, sometimes it can be a challenge for the administration. Uh -huh. Now, people uh, accused uh, some of the uh, large beverage providers 
Pepsi and Coke, I to say, boy, right. I know it's a Coca-Cola town, uh, of providing schools. And have you had a message for them? Or have you worked with them to try to put uh, juices out in the in the community and as a, as in, instead of having, you know, these drinks and, yeah. and sugary drinks? To be honest, that's a great idea. We have not, okay. we have not, <laughs> we have not done that, but okay. that is absolutely a great idea. That's something mm -hmm. we probably should okay. look into. Now, Live Healthy and Thrive Youth Foundation, it says you seek to educate and empower youth on the healthy life size to avoid obesity, diabetes, and hypertension. How important is that in our community for hypertension, especially diabetes? Well, um, they say, according to the CDC, Centers for Disease mm -hmm. Control, that um, diabetes is growing mm -hmm. over the last um, 20 mm -hmm. and 30 years, where um, young people at the age of a couple years mm -hmm. old all the way up to 21 years old, sure. the numbers are staggering and they're growing. Mm -hmm. And so kids are starting to get more diabetes um, diagnoses than ever early, before. And, earlier, and, okay. they're, and they're early starting stages, earlier, right. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So the bottom line is, if that's something that is prevalent in the African American mm -hmm. community, in any um, Hispanic community, or even Caucasian, who, whatever, whatever age group mm -hmm. it is, right. whatever ethnic group it is, mm -hmm. we have to stop it early that's and true. get the education out there so that people can educate themselves about how to avoid it, what they need right. to do in their daily habits so that they don't have to suffer from it. You talked earlier about the scholarship for the uh, kids, uh, the book scholarship. You have an award program coming up on this Thursday. Yes. Uh, that's going to be a tribute uh, to people that have reached a pinnacle of success in their lives. Tell us a little, little bit about this on Thursday. Where is it? It's called the uh, third annual Pinnacle Awards and Scholarship. The third Gala. annual, okay. So yes. you, you, okay, you ready to go then? Yes. We By the are. third time, <laughs> she should have it together. Okay. Right. So we are celebrating our our third year serving Atlanta families, and okay. the Pinnacle Award and Scholarship Gala is going to be at Georgia Power Auditorium downtown okay. on Thursday, December fifth. Okay. And you can still get tickets at um, our website, livehealthyandthriveyouth.org. Okay. okay. And uh, basically, we are acknowledging uh, people in the community who are at the um, pinnacle of success in right. their career who also embody philanthropy. Okay, excellent. So is this Thursday, what time again? 7 o'clock p.m. At the Georgia Power? Georgia Power Auditorium. All right, and if they need to contact you about tickets, your phone number and this it, camera right here? It is livehealthyandthriveyouth.org, 800-551-3775. And that's this Thursday, December the 5th. I'm going to try to make it. I think I got a class coming up, but I'm going to try to make it and make sure it works. It's the Pinnacle Awards and Scholarship Gala this Wednesday. At what time again? 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. Make sure you go by and say, give me a phone number one more time, Lori. 800-551-3775. All right. Well, thank you so much. My first guest is Lori Manns with Live Healthy and Thrive Youth Foundation. The event is coming up this w w Thursday uh, at Georgia Power. You can give us a call even at my office and I can give you additional information at 404-371-3681. We're going to take a break. I promise you, stay right there. I'll be right back.
And welcome back to the Stan Watson Show again. I'm your host, Stan Watson. Thank you again for tuning in. Call me tonight, 770-559-2999 is the number here uh, in the studio, Comcast Studio 25. Well, I have two guests tonight. Uh, this guy was calling and said, Stan, I got to get back on your show. Stan, I got, I'm doing great stuff at Columbia High. I'm doing stuff in the school system. And then he brought a guest with him. He didn't tell me that. <laughs> Mr. Tony Parker is here. Uh, he's a motivational speaker, and he has brought along Miss Stacy Phillips. How are you la young ladies doing and young man doing? I'm doing great. Good. Doing Tim, great. What, Thank you. Tim, what you doing since last time I saw you? you, just, you I just had him on stage about three months ago. It was about three months <laughs> yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, so, well, hey, Tim, what you, know you doing what? since then? You know, you asked me what, what's in store for me, and I said I really didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I said I was going to stay humble and just exactly. let God kind of guide me. You said that. Uh, I started right. off acting. Um, mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. um, I got into the school system as right. far as speaking to the kids. Uh, right. Miss Stacy and I met because I needed a publicist. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, you know what? I'll tell you what. Since you can't afford me. Speak at this youth event for me. Well, she said she can't afford me, so yeah. she, she know what she's doing there. Well, actually, because I'm you know you know struggling at right, right. <laughs> But 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 uh, uh however, mm -hmm. it worked out well. Excellent. And uh, it was like I was a natural for it. So mm -hmm. then uh, a lot of people uh, started seeing the video, so it started you know going viral. Uh huh. And um, excellent. That's how I got started. Now the last time you were talking about what you were doing with motivational speaking and those kind of things, how do you get in school system? I know that one time you called me and told me that you were doing something with Hank Stewart. But you were also at some school, and you called me to see if I was coming by. Is, has this been the uh, uh, guiding force or the encouragement that you needed to get into the school system? How did it happen? Absolutely. I teamed up with uh, Derek Bozeman. Derek Bozeman. I, okay, gotcha. I, I teamed right. up with Derek Bozeman mm -hmm. uh, with uh, WAOK 1380. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, teamed up with Greg Street as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he have a reading program that he goes around to the school. Actually, we was just at uh, Crawford Loom uh, Middle School. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Principal uh, Miss Hill. Okay, excellent. And what's the message in the school system that you're bringing to the kids? Team motivation. All right. Stacey, jump in and tell us what you're doing. Then Team, motivation. Team motivation. Team okay. motivation. Motivate. We're, we're collaborating with other youth organizations like Lori Mann, who okay. was just on the show. Mm -hmm. But we uh, are here to motivate, educate, and inspire young people to mm -hmm. uh, their realize the power of their full potential. Excellent. And what's the, the uh, target or age group? Uh, is it middle school, elementary school, or high school? What, what, what kids are we trying to uh, encourage to be a part of your program? Middle and high school. Middle and high school. Why is it so important at middle and high school? Well, high school, right now we have a very um, a dropout rate that mm -hmm. is skyrocketing <laughs> in the state of Georgia mm -hmm. and across the country, and we yes, want right. to address mm -hmm. that. Um, but it starts before high school, right, so we want to get them before they get into high school, and mm -hmm. so middle school is that, that key area right Excellent. now that's being targeted. Okay. Right. The freshmen. The freshmen in high school. The freshmen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to find their way. Just coming out of middle yeah, school. Yeah, just coming out. You know, trying to find identity. You know, they're trying to find identity. Oh, I got you. Yeah, the absolutely. little girls being told by the, the seniors that they're pretty, and the guys are looking at the, the seniors and saying, I wish I could date her. So absolutely. they all messed up. Yeah. Now, you, your message um, to young people, oftentimes uh, the older generation, including myself, we find it hard to have a hook for the young people to get their attention, uh, to, to uh, uh, retain their attention. Right. What, what's your hook? What, what's your message? What's your motivation to make them stay in front of you and, and you see that you're making a difference? Because <laughs> it's hard to talk to kids. I've been, all, I've been going to career fairs right. and, oh, man. Excuse me, can I have your attention, please? <laughs> Absolutely. And then I go into my Memphis mode. Uh, then I just, you don't know who I am, okay? But how, how, what do you do? <laughs> well, it's all about motivation. That's right, okay. It's all about motivation, uh, down to the facilitators, mm -hmm. uh, the principals, the parents. Everybody needs to be in on this movement. Mm -hmm. And the movement is called team motivation. Right, okay. You know, uh, actually, team motivation is all about teens maximizing their potential mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know their 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 learning potential right. their you know um dreaming big yeah dreaming, dreaming big. yeah 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 just just it sounds like you have some benchmarks when you go into the school now how do you measure your success rate uh with these kids you've gone in done the motivation you have some support and, and some partners and stakeholders with you uh do you ever go back and see if you made a difference it's a curriculum that we're working with. Great. It's not a one-time okay. shot. So you have so, a curriculum? Okay, yes. excellent. So you have some measuring uh, tools to, to utilize once you go into school. Absolutely. What, what we're tracking been, them. Is, is this a gender-neutral program where we have girls and boys, or is it just girls or something? It's, <laughs> it's both. Okay, I mean, uh, I've seen some tough girls children. in school. I've seen some tough it's, girls in school. Right. It's pretty much all about children. You mm -hmm. know, there's, there's no one singled out. You know, if, if you're a you know young brother playing mm -hmm. sports or a young right. sister 
you know, right. in academics, you know. I mean, the last time I went to Towers two years ago before Mr. Simpson got there, let me preference that. <laughs> uh, man, I had a young girl who was just killing me. Mm -hmm. I think I was sweating a little bit. She said, let me go to the bathroom and get you a towel because you can't talk to me sweating like that. Wow. This, not the guy, the young girl. Mm -hmm. I guess my point is that since your program is gender neutral, you're trying to reach the young women as well as the young men. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And what's, what's been your motivation, Tony, to continue to, to make this a success? Personal when I was motivation. growing up, when I was growing up in the boys club, um, you know, I had several, you know, NBA players come mm -hmm. when I was a little young brother. Uh, mm -hmm. My dad, my mm -hmm. grandfather, you right. know, my grandmother now, okay. you know, that was like my motivation, right. you know. And now, um, as I, you know, went through my little storms, mm -hmm. you know, I, I said, hold on, wait a minute, what, what, you know, what am I doing? You know, mm -hmm. let me get back to the basics, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So You heard some basic stuff back in the day. Right, so now I'm trying it back. to, exactly. So now uh, what I thought about doing was, you know, creating mm -hmm. this movement, you know, with team motivation. Sure. Um, and it's just... It's been overwhelming, man. I just, I just thank God for the for the favor. Uh, Stacey is the new publicist for uh, uh, Tony. Well, actually, um, she's my business partner. Now she's your business partner. Well, <laughs> well actually, she started off as that, but we okay. kind of connected, and she okay. was already in, into doing things right. like that. Excellent, it's, excellent. It's so now, what's your motivation to be his business partner? Once you once you started, you saw that you would probably help him be uh, more proficient in the in the media and community like that. So, what's your motivation to become a business partner? Were you? What are you telling uh, him that he and, and your team what you guys need to be doing in the school to make this work? I've been working in youth development for a really long time Excellent. now. Okay, so, okay. All right. uh, so you got some experience? Yes. Yes, okay, all right, that's a good thing. Um, I work with the United Way, okay. uh, Boys and Girls Club, YMCAs. We've sure. been doing a lot of work for a long time, uh, doing evaluations and measurements and mm -hmm. tracking. Excellent. And so we have a curriculum that we're working with already. So Excellent. it was just a perfect partnership. Tony's mm -hmm. out there keeping it real, and I'm well, behind the scenes. Now. He's always been active. I mean, you know, <laughs> spreading the word. Spreading the word, and I'm behind the scenes making sure that. Uh, Excellent. So, if someone takes wanted place. to make sure that um, uh, we get your information out to the public, tell us how we can get in contact with you and where you're going to be next. Tell us what you're doing in the in the next community or next school. Well, uh, you can reach us at uh, teammotivation.org. Mm -hmm. Okay. The and cell phone number. Um, or the phone number the that phone they should number. reach us is 404-692-0642. Okay. Do that number one more time. 404-692-0642. Excellent. And you're available to come out and speak at faith-based community uh, events uh, in the schools. Community-based uh, community. organizations. Right, okay. Absolutely. Um, Excellent. All right. And schools. Well, we've had uh, Tony L. Parker and uh, Miss Stacy Phillips. I did not know that they were de uh, team uh, teamed up on me tonight. <laughs> I thought it was, she was the publicist, but she's come at, uh, full circle and helping out with this event. Well, let us know what we can do to help you uh, make sure that you're uh, uh, promoting your events and maybe we can send it out on our uh, Facebook Absolutely. page and in the social media and also in our uh, email list from the county. Appreciate and, it. Appreciate and, it. You, you did more than enough by helping us be on your show. Well, that's good. You know, yeah. And you're doing a lot of things in the community as well. I, 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 I wish I, hey, you, you, you gave out about 200 turkeys, man. <laughs> so we show sure appreciate that in the community. That was last Sunday. Yeah, that was, I what know, but, that, I mean, but still, though, yeah. that's 200 Excellent. turkeys, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Well, Tony, so we talked about 200 children. So right. it's kind of Excellent. about the same. Okay. Well, know? wonderful. Well, Tony and uh, I keep mentioning Stacy. Stacey, Stacey. Uh, I enjoy having you on the show. Thank you for having us. To uh, make sure that you're in the community and make sure that if you have an event, call me so we can help you publicize where you are right. and what you do. But stay positive. Actually, Absolutely. our next stop is uh, Crawford Long Middle School. Excellent. I figured you had Crawford Long Middle to. School. Okay, that's where you're going to be next. And what Absolutely. day is that? Actually, um, it's in the making. We still have to uh, touch bases with uh, okay. the schedule uh, over there at uh, Miss Hill. Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoyed this segment uh, with Tony and Stacy. Uh, they're doing an awesome job in the community, uh, motivational speaking, teamwork, team building, seeing like youth motivation, yes. all kinds of things. So make sure you give them a call. We're going to take another break, and I promise you, you stay right there. I Absolutely. will be right back. Thank you for tuning in to the Stan Watson Show.
Welcome back to the Stan Watson Show. Again, I'm your host, Stan Watson. Thank you for tuning in tonight. Call in at 770-559-2999. We will take your call. That's 770-559-2999 is the number. I hope that you enjoyed our last segment uh, with Stacy and Tony. Uh, they're doing an awesome job in our community. Make sure you give them a call. Uh, get them out to your community association, to the homeowner association, to the schools, and to our churches. They're doing a great job with our youth. And they have a message of motivational uh, 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 tendencies with our youth. And don't forget, my good friend Lori Mann is having her event on this Thursday, the Pinnacle Award and Scholarship Gala. It's Thursday, December 5th, uh, 2013, uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Georgia Power Corporate Headquarters. And that's off of uh, Ralph McGill Boulevard. Again, the Pinnacle Awards and Scholarship Gala this Thursday, uh, December the 5th at 7 o'clock p.m. Go out and help Laura because she does a great job, not only with the motivation and the healthy uh, initiative that she does for educating our youth, she also does a great job at health fairs and she supports the community. And this is a great event to make sure that she'll be able to give book scholarships to our kids here in the cab in metropolitan Atlanta. Let me just thank everybody that came by on last Sunday uh, before Thanksgiving, we uh, had an awesome responsibility of trying to make sure we fed those that didn't have uh, the means for uh, obtaining meat or turkeys on Thanksgiving. I want to thank and give a shout out to the Atlanta Hawks, uh, in particular Jeff Teague, our point guard, and Paul Millsap, our small forward. They were able to help me to uh, get uh, turkeys to give away over 200 turkeys. was given away at Greater Travelers Rest Missionary Baptist Church on last Sunday. And also, I want to thank Grand Hustle. Uh, that's uh, T.I.'s group, and they did an awesome job uh, in making sure we had turkeys for our kids and for our young people and for our seniors on last uh, Thursday for Thanksgiving. So I want to give a shout out to them. They did an awesome job. Now on this Saturday, we have our community cabinet breakfast. It'll be held at Chapel Hill Middle School. It starts at 9 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we generally finish about 11 a.m. We uh, have a, uh, a fast-paced uh, fast, uh, fast -paced environment. We have a great uh, agenda for you. We'll be talking about GDOT and what they're doing on Wesley Chapel, and especially what they're doing on 285. We're also going to talk about our fat oils and grease, what we're doing with our grease uh, uh, in the community, and trying to make sure that we take care of our sewers and our water. Uh, sources in and around the Cab County. So on this Saturday, I need for you to bring a canned good. It's also our food drive. So I have some ROTC groups from all our middle schools and high schools will be helping me with this canned drive on this Saturday. So again, I need for you to come out on this Saturday. It's a free breakfast, but this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., we'll be doing our community cabinet breakfast, get some great information. You'll be able to meet some of your elected officials, your judges, uh, county commissioners, and other people. So come out again this Saturday, but don't just come empty-handed. Come and bring uh, a canned good to make sure that we can make sure that uh, Jose Feed the Hungry, Atlanta Food Bank, and other organizations have food uh, for the needy for uh, the Christmas holiday. Also, I was downtown in Atlanta about a week ago, and this grand idea of a, a man came up to me and told me that he was doing an event at Turner Field in the Blue Lot, and it was a uh, ice capade, it was a uh, I mean, a winter wonderland, it had uh, the Taj Mahal, had the uh, presidential palace, I had uh, uh, dragons from China, 
And so it's going on, I think, from uh, November the 28th up until December 21st, I think it is. And so I want you guys to go out. Is that Turner Field, which is right off of Capitol Avenue and I-20. This guy's doing a phenomenal job in presenting this event. You'll be surprised at all the things you'll see, the rides that you'll have. And I'm going to try to get some tickets for next Saturday, for next Tuesday, uh, first for the staff, for the guys that handle the count and the young ladies that handle the, the uh, cameras. I'm going to try to get some tickets for them first. Then I got to take care of my producer, George, and his family. And then if we have any tickets uh, left over, guess what? You can call in, and we'll probably take the first five callers. But I'm going to try to get tickets for this. Uh, this is a great, great place to take your kids and your family, so we'll make sure it works. Uh, the only problem I have is that it's in Atlanta and not in DeKalb County, but it's a great, great event. So I hope that you enjoyed the announcement. We're going to take a quick break because I have somebody that's going to talk about uh, the entrepreneurial spirit and the global entrepreneurial workshop that they're going to be having in and around Metropolitan Atlanta. Stay right there. I'll be right back. Thank you for tuning in. All right, uh, don't forget, it. this Saturday, I need to see you. Thank you for tuning in to the Stan Watson Show live tonight in Comcast Studio 25. My number is 770-559-2999. It's a number here in the studio. If you need to reach us in the office, you can call uh, Kelly at 404-371-3681. Well, I have a great guest. She had an opportunity to come to my office. She said, Stan, I want to be on your TV show. I got something to share with your viewers. And I said, come on, Miss Eminette Mason. Is that right? Yes. Global Entrepreneur uh, Week, Week is coming up. That's Tell me a little bit about that. What is that going on? Okay. Um, the Global Entrepreneurship Week mm -hmm. is one week every year in November. Uh -huh. And it's a worldwide celebration. Worldwide of, celebration. Yes, okay, not just in the United States. No. Not just in all Georgia. all over the world. Not just in DeKalb County. Not at all. It's all over the world. All over the world. Okay, she said worldwide. Okay, <laughs> I want to make sure she said that. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's the biggest celebration of entrepreneurship. Okay. And um, one week in November every year uh -huh. um, it is put mm -hmm. aside so that we can celebrate the innovators, okay. the, the people with the great big ideas, uh -huh. and um, the people who create jobs, and um, in particular, the young people, the, the, the younger mm -hmm. generation, that are, are becoming a, a big um, figure in ent entrepreneurship. So now how did you come up with um, recognizing these entrepreneurs? Okay, well, this um, celebration was started um, in 2008 mm -hmm. by the Kaufman Foundation. It was okay. spearheaded by the Kaufman Foundation mm -hmm. and in collaboration with the um, then Prime Minister of Great mm -hmm. Britain okay. and a, a number of other significant figures. So it started uh, worldwide in Europe somewhere. Yes, it okay. started in, um, in um, England. Yes, and well, in collaboration with the Kaufman okay. Foundation, and which so is in the United States. And so then it kind States. of uh, migrated to the United States. Well, it's, it gradually spread all over the world, and all now over, over 125 countries participate over in that event. Over 125 countries are yes, celebrating it. Yes. Now, tell me, who, who, entrepreneurs, how did how did they contact you to be a part of the celebration? Well, they don't contact me because, um, unfortunately, in Georgia, it's not so well known. So my uh -huh. um, responsibility is to spread the word. Okay, so, so you got to spread I, the word. Yes, uh -huh. what I'm doing, I've been participating in it since 2008. Mm -hmm. And um, in the past three years, since I've had my own organization, mm -hmm. I have been a partner. Mm -hmm. And what we do is we organize events that mm -hmm. will uh, um, help to raise awareness mm -hmm. about entrepreneurship. Okay. And we usually focus on the young people uh -huh. because the next generation, they are the key to the financial emancipation uh -huh. and the, the improvement of economies and, and things like that. So what can we do to help you promote it? You said that your, your job is to make sure that we're doing a better job in Georgia Yes, to in it. Georgia, for instance, this year, um, um, almost like two or three weeks before the mm -hmm. event, before mm -hmm. the week, mm -hmm. there were only like three organizations involved. Three organizations only? In the whole of Georgia. But luckily, by the time um, November 18th came up, because mm -hmm. the week was from 
November 18 to 24th. Mm -hmm. By that time, there were like 16 events throughout the whole of Georgia. Now tell me a little and bit about the events, enough. though. For, uh, what, what can we expect at the events? We showed up at this event. What were we looking at? What well, we each organization um, designs their own activity. For okay. instance, my own organization for this for this year, mm -hmm. we organized um, a youth empowerment workshop. Excellent. Where okay. the theme was um, telling your own story. It's mm -hmm. all about your story. Your story matters. Right. And what we tried to do was to do link storytelling mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? All the successful business people, anybody who has ha had any kind of success in life, had a story to tell. And invariably, right. they start from those stories sure. that impact their lives so much that they, they use those stories as the foundation to start something. Excellent. And what we did do in this workshop, which was awesome, mm -hmm. was to show the, the kids that your story impacts your life. Your right. story helps to determine who you are, right. the decisions you make, the careers that you follow. The, your story is very, very important in, in, in your community, in your family, Excellent. and in whatever you do in your life. Excellent. So we, we link that to entrepreneurship because from your story, you can create new things, new sure ideas. Mm -hmm. And we, we taught the, the kids that no matter what happens to you in life, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing mm -hmm. or what, something you don't even sure. want to talk about, it creates it an, it has an thing. impact now and what, you can use it. Where are you going to have your venue? Where are we assembling for this uh, entrepreneurial Well, week? actually, it's already passed because oh, the really? week was from the 18th mm -hmm. to the 24th. Okay. And I was hoping that we would have the interview during that week. That's but okay. it we, didn't we, work out, so the week has out, already passed. But we're still getting together. So where was the venue then? The venue was at um, the Decatur Library. Decatur the, the Library. The auditorium of Excellent. the Decatur Library. Okay. Yes. Well, you do a lot of things to, to help us around the community. I want you to reach out and give them your phone number in case uh, they want to talk to you about uh, the entrepreneur uh, workshop, mm -hmm. the week, and what we can do to make it work. You can give it in this camera right okay. here. Okay. Um, you can reach me at 770-708-7374. Or time. better yet, you can go to my website, which okay. is www.xgeninc, I-X-G-E-N-I-N-C. Oh, you gotta do org. that. Again. You gotta do that again. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot. Okay, my the phone number. Oh, there you that's go. the that's the easiest Excellent. one. Seven seven zero seven zero eight seven three seven four. All right, they can reach you and there. there. The, yes, you and can the website reach you there. is. And you can also leave a message or ask a question on my website, which is www.ixgeninc.org. Excellent. Okay. Well, next year we'll try to make sure we get it on time, but I wanted to go ahead and get you on because I think it's a great thing for our youth and for entrepreneurship all over the country, but especially here in the Cab County, I want to make sure our youth understand what you're trying to get done. Definitely. Well, thank you so much. Our guest has been Ms. Eminette Mason with Global Entrepreneurship Week. Although it's passed, I want you to get ready for it. Next year is a great organization, great yes. idea, and we're going to help our youth understand they can thrive by making money, and it's something Definitely. that they will keep money in our community. So stay right there. We'll be right back. You're watching Stan Watson Show. Thank you again.
And welcome back to the Stan Watson Show. Thank you again. I'm Stan Watson, your host. Call me tonight at 770-559-2999. We'll take your call. If you need to call me in the office, call Kelly. Don't call me. 404-371-3681. We'll make sure that we take care of all your needs. Well, I'm back with my fourth guest, and that is Mother Dillard's Village of Hope. Alicia Board, the CEO, President. Roxanne Shield, the CFO. Y'all can raise your hand when I say who it is. Okay. And then Brittany <laughs> Henderson. Uh, did I say it right? Manager, who is that? You can raise your hand, okay, all right. All right. This is the House of Love uh, for our children. Is that right? That's correct. All right, and you got a flyer. Let me take a Joel, can I get a shot of their flyers so as they tell me what they do? Make sure that, oh, it fell down. We'll have to do it a little later. That's all right, we'll make it work. Tell me about what you do at, at Village of Hope. Mother Dillard's Village of Hope, what is that? Mother Dillard's Village of Hope is an organization, it's a nonprofit organization okay. who's out to help at risk youth. At risk youth. With or without children. Oh, really? Yes. I mean, you know what, you guys are staying in our theme because tonight we've been talking, as you know, about youth at risk and all those kind of things. So now, what, what, what do you do at Mother Dillard's Village of Hope? Well, first of all, Lisa and I both have okay. been a foster parent. I've been a foster parent okay. for over seven years. Okay. And, Lisa and I've been a foster parent for 10 years. Okay. And what we... She, she, I'm just Lisa. giving it a hard time. We were trying to make it unanimous. Okay. And she's our helper. She's, she's our backup. Okay, your backup. Yeah. Now, who came up with the idea? Because if, if you're dealing with foster kids, those are uh, kids that are at risk, need help, um, really uh, property of the state, so to speak. And they need uh, an identity, they need love, they need help, they need shelter, the whole nine yards. What made you want to be a foster parent, first of all? Well, <laughs> Either one. For me, Lisa, I come okay. from a big family. Okay. Um, my children, I have two biological daughters, and they're used to being around a big family. So mm -hmm. when I moved here to Georgia, okay. you know, it was just us and a okay. few family members, and we seen the Wednesday child, and they wanted me to adopt. But being a single mom, I decided. Wednesday child. Yes. Okay, that's a lot. Okay. Yes. They want you to adopt right away. Oh, no. All right. <laughs> and I said, no, well, let's, let's do mm -hmm. fostering. Okay. And I have a huge support from my daughters in doing it. So I've been doing it for 10 years. You've been doing this for 10 years. 10 so years. this organization, Mother Dillers, has, has been around for 10 years? Well, no. Okay, Not you've been doing it. Okay, all right. Well, yeah, okay. We've been foster parents for, for seven and okay. 10 years. And okay. then Lisa introduced us to it, introduced myself to it. Excellent. And myself, like Lisa, I've come from a large family. Okay. I'm number 11 out of 11. 11 out of, where, where are you from? <laughs> South Carolina. Oh, Lord, okay. And my parents didn't have TV at the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a lot of information. <laughs> now, if you talk about your vision, it's a Mother Dillard's Vision of Hope offers spiritual principles and teachings for at-risk youth ages 10 to 19. Now, why did you choose that age group? Well, we see that if we start an early grabbing uh -huh. our kids at an early age, sure. um, trying to coach and mold and shape them back into, because the love is being missed at that mm -hmm. point. A lot, some people being in foster care, they pick and choose sure. the areas that they want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the younger age is getting left out, opposed to the middle age, the teenagers is getting left out. Right, right. We don't have too much of a problem with the arm babies, because everybody want an arm baby. Yeah. Everybody want a crib but baby. But them kids are walking around <laughs> taking stuff off the, off the stage and finding your money and all that kind of stuff, and going in the refrigerator and the light coming off. <laughs> those are the ones you want to try to get. And those are the ones we, and now, with issues going on, our kids are starting now not only in middle school anymore, mm -hmm. they're starting at elementary, learning right. things and, and being involved in things that is that we're trying to help mm -hmm. prevent and be a right. part of a positive role. So Excellent. we want to start at a younger age. Now, do you have any uh, partnerships with the state of Georgia, with DFACS in the county? Who, who are some of your partners? How do you, how do you reach the kids? Right now, we go through DFACS, okay. and then we also have partnered with Bethany Christian Group, Christian okay. Group as well. But, but let me just clear this, because we are, I am a foster parent through DFACS. Okay. What we've done was design a program mm -hmm. ourselves right. that we're going to run and manage. Right. But right you have now, the system of DFACS, but you have to get the kids in foster care through the agency. Right. right. So your program, right. is that right? Well, the thing is, we have not established a, a facility. Yeah. Okay. A facility. facility. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's what we gotcha. Because okay. we want to actually do a residential facility Excellent. with youth ages 10 through 19 with or without children. Okay, so how are you servicing the children now? 
Are you going to group homes or bring them to your home? Or what are right, you doing? Yeah, right. Talk a little bit about that, how that works. Basically, right now, well, Brittany, she's doing, she's so quiet. Brittany, you got to say something in a minute now. <laughs> right, so go well, ahead. I'm the manager over at the um, House of Love Youth okay. with Children. All right. And I was a young mom. Okay. So I know the challenges and struggles of being a young mom. Okay. So I want to help youth. That, are, that have children not go through okay. the same struggles I went through. Excellent. Being on this, in a system mm -hmm. or on living on the system, depending on the system, is very it's negative. Very hard. Very yeah, hard. Yeah, very hard on people. Yes. Yeah. And, and we I saw don't the horror stories about that. our kids in foster care, and we have those parents right. that are. But getting do, stuck on worried, welfare. Right. You're stuck on welfare, and those right. parents that are worried about the check and not exactly. worried about right. the children. Right. Yeah, and that's, and that's the one thing that's to me, Lisa and I um, have. Um, been trying to set a mm -hmm. difference in, in that image with especially mm -hmm. when it comes to children coming into our home. Sure. We try to take them and incorporate it, um, things that they have not been a part of. Mm -hmm. um, this past weekend we actually took one of the kids to um, Global Disney, Global Winter Wonderland. Oh, so you already been there? Yes. How did you, how did you like that? Oh it was awesome. Awesome. Cold. I, yes. I told you awesome. myself when I went there Cold. I was like I don't believe this guy's doing all this. Yes. Yeah. Did you see it the White House? Everything is included. Yes. Uh -huh. Did you see Dr. King? But you did ask the question right now what we're doing is tutoring. Mm -hmm. Brittany's doing transportation Excellent. where she's dropping yeah. off okay. and picking up youth. And, and a daycare. But you're working on uh, having your own facility. Right. Exactly. And so how, exactly. how far in the future do you see before you can have your facility? Well, we're hoping by next by year. middle of next okay. 2014. If the funding, and that's what we're looking for, for funding, funding and, and as sponsorship. As as okay. Well, as well, tell them about that. Don't tell me. We, right. We're looking for funding, <laughs> sponsorship, we need, support. You need and, the money. And I just want to say, we often hear that it takes a village to raise a child. Sure. Exactly. We are Mother Dillard's Village of Hope, mm -hmm. and we want people to be a part of our village. Right, okay, well, excellent. We'll make sure that works for you. Now, mm -hmm. with you hoping, and we know it's gonna work, next year with mm -hmm. your uh, uh, facility, mm -hmm. what are you able to do now? How many number of kids, uh, for a census, I guess, how many number of kids are you able to service right now? Three. And three. that's the thing. But that's Foster. three good ones. You're saving three good ones. Three, three, per, three, house. three, three per, per home. Three, three per home. home. Three per home. Right. Three homes? Yeah. Three, three per home, too. But we know. Two homes, okay, I'm sorry, two homes. Two homes, and then, like, now, I'm no, I'm not doing it as of right now because I'm, at work because mm -hmm. we both are full-time employees okay gotcha and being that our mind schedule has gotten real real hectic so. she's been really really <laughs> orchestrating this whole thing with making it work making it work uh -huh. right she's doing all the bank you know making sure we have merchants because on our website you can go to the website click on support and you can make a donation you can do it right now give, give it a website <laughs> yes, yeah. right. they're doing it right now mdvh.org Okay. MD, say it again. MDVH.org. And that uh, stands for Mother Dillard's Village of Hope. I thought I was on the Jerry Lewis telephone. <laughs> Goodness, y'all know that. Huh? So uh, what can we do with, to help you beside donate? Do you need articles uh, for the house that's coming up? We, we don't have a house next year. So do you need articles, uh, furniture, and those kind of yeah. things? Yes, you we start will. storing them. Well, tell, yeah. them what you need. tell them what you need. We need our, a our, builder. Our, <laughs> and you need a, bu let me, need let a builder. Let me just say this. Our, our key features are to have a virtual online yeah education we want everything to be housed within our facility okay we oh, want to be able to do a holistic program sure. we're going to have where we can um, grow our own fruits and vegetables Excellent. aquaponics hydroponics and Excellent. to make fish so we need your help need your help I will give them a phone number because I know they got the website is and our, our every all the information is on our website okay. everything is included on our website go to www.mdvh.org. All right, well, they got together. Our guests have been Ms. Uh, Mother Dillard's Village of Hope, Alicia Board, Roxanne Shield, and Brittany Henderson, who didn't say much, but she's with us. <laughs> she's the manager. So, helping with the House of Love with their children. We're going to take right. a break. We'll be right back. You're watching Stan Watson Show. Thank you. <laughs>
And welcome back to the Stan Watson Show. I'm your host, Stan Watson. Thank you again for tuning in to our live call-in show tonight, 770-559-2999. Our theme tonight has been helping our youth to thrive in DeKalb County, so I hope you enjoy that. Well, I have a great singer, Ms. Delisa Hunter, is with me tonight. Delisa, how are you doing tonight? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Good to see you. Good to uh, see you, too, sir. Where are you from? I'm from, actually, I'm in Villarica, Villarica, you, Georgia. You were born in Villarica, Georgia? I was born in Manchester, England. Manchester, England? I was raised in Fort Lauderdale, oh, and we moved up here in 2005. Are you a military child? You said? No, my parents are British. My grandparents are Jamaican. Oh, really? Yeah. That's awesome. And how long have you been in Atlanta? Been in Atlanta since 05, so what's that, seven years? Oh, about so? seven years, okay. Seven. And what moved you here to Atlanta? Well, my husband and I were both musicians. Uh -huh. uh, he's a minister of music and a recording artist as well, and we just... <laughs> You know, felt like it was the move of God for Minister us to of music and recording artist. You hear he that? He is. He's so awesome. So they're doing good. Well, good. How long have you been singing then? How long have I been singing? Yes, ma'am. Since I was two. Since she was about two. She was two. <laughs> I've been she's only mom. 18, but she's, she's been stop two. Stop okay. it. Oh, she's a stop it. Well, good. What are you singing for us tonight? And uh, is it contemporary? Is it gospel? Is it uh, fusion jazz? What is it? Okay. So what I'm going to sing tonight, uh, my first song is my first single, I Need You. I Need it You. It is... Uh, I would call it R&B Christian. It's, R &B it's, Christian. It's, it's very 90s R&B, very cool groove. My husband, uh, Kendall Hunter, he wrote and produced it. And so he wrote it and produced this song. Yes, sir. And so you're the singer for the song. I'm the singer, yes. All right, and tell me the name again. I Need You. I Need You by Delisa Hunter. Y'all ready to hear this? Let's go right to her right now. You can snap your fingers if you want to. Hey. Like the flowers need the sun and rain. You're my oxygen. Without you, I can't breathe. Lord, you're all I need. Don't ever leave. I never. So many things I can live without, but it's your love and grace I can't be without. If you didn't rescue me, God, where would I be? Be a broken ship, sinking in life, see?
midst of my days, I'll always love you. Can't imagine myself being without you. I 